Happy New Year's race fans and welcome to another episode of Pure Racing Pit Reporters on your NASCAR's official YouTube channel. I'd like to introduce to you your NASCAR's PR manager Gianluca Guilia, who is again with me today. And my name is Andre Wiegold and I'm an editor and reporter for the NASCAR Wheel and Year series. And together we will take you behind the scenes of Europe's official NASCAR series. We are right in the winter break between the 2020 and 2021 seasons, but there are still a lot of things we can discuss from 2020. We have two champions, five trophy win winners who have been crowned, and we are already looking at the 2020 season with the opener scheduled for April 17 and 18 at Valencia Circuit Ricardo Tomo in Spain. Today we have the Challenger Trophy winner Davide Dallara with us, one of the most pleasant surprises of the 2020 season. In what, what, in what was his very first Euronesca season and with a new team debuting in Euronesca, he was supposed to drive in Euronesca too, but moved to Euronesca Pro right before round one at Vallelunga with his five top top 10 finishes among the pros and the best results of eighth place in the final race of the season at Valencia, he won a fantastic battle for the Challenger Trophy against the likes of Mauro Trione, Evgen Sokolovsky, Dario Caso, and so on. So why don't we welcome him? Welcome, Davide Dallara. Hi, everyone. Thank you. So let's start with our uh, pit race, pit reporters interview, Davide. You debuted straight among the best NASCAR drivers in Europe. What was your feeling before the start in Vallelunga and after the race when you finished in the top 10? So uh, my feeling was uh, I was really nervous because as Gianluca told, uh, I was totally new. I, I drove the car only in the recruitment days. So two in one day I, I drove like half an hour totally. So I had totally no experience. So I was nervous, but uh, I was ready because I knew Vallelunga is a track that I love. So I was I was ready. And what what to what to say? Um, I was surprised by myself because I didn't expect to to be to be that fast from the start. Even if obviously from the first guys there is still a, a lot of gap, but I was I was surprised uh, of my of my performance since Vallelunga. Um, it was not only you. Um, who debuted, it was also the not only motorsport team that made his first appearance in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. What was it that the team has that made you guys competitive right from the beginning? Yeah, the fact that the team, uh, the, also the team is new in the Euro, Euro NASCAR was a, a, a problem for us because uh, they didn't know the car, they didn't know how to make a perfect setup. So we worked for with what we had, so standard setups, more or less. And, but they are really good. I'm with them since the last year. They are great guys. So I was sure that they could give me the, a good car for every race. So we work all together uh, without knowing the car, that's sure. But we, every, every race we started understanding the car and, that was the result. The Challenger Trophy this season was really, really interesting, and it went down to the very last race of the season. And you came out the winner, by the way, uh, against uh, plenty of experienced contenders. Uh, how was the atmosphere between you guys? What do you think about your rivals? The atmosphere were really, really was really, really good, especially with Trione, that was my direct rival, my direct competitor. Uh, we 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 had a great uh, feeling. I think uh, we were like friends from the start. We joke, we we laugh together. So I think that was one of the best part of this uh, of this season to have this kind of a friendship with my competitors obviously on the track we when you when you put the helmet and go on the throttle it's totally different there is no friendship there is respect always but you have you want to win but out of the track there was a great great uh, feeling between us 
And with Mauro, you're sure there's always a great feeling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He is great. <laughs> Yeah, but it, we saw we saw all of you on uh, on the podiums and in the paddock, and and and, and it's really nice to see uh, drivers going along uh, and and being able to 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 live together after badly so hard on track. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's also I'm a really expansive person, so I, I'm friend with everyone, and I, I think it's good that. It's like that because uh, we we have fun. We are uh, we go to have a good uh, a good feeling between uh, between all uh, all the driver is is something really important for me. Uh, what were the highest and lowest moments in your twenty twenty season? So uh, the highest moment, I think. Uh, I can say the 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 final, the, the winning of the of the trophy, but uh, maybe thinking also the the wet race in Zolder, I think it was one of my highest moment in this season because I had a really good performance. Uh, it was my second race, uh, and so yeah, I, I don't know between these two moments. But yeah, yet, yet say the, the highest moment were, were, uh, was the, the winning of the trophy. The lowest moment was always in Valencia when I had uh, my clutch broken. Um, I was really, really sad because it was the, the semifinals. I was fighting for the championship, so I had a really low moment. Uh, but my team uh, fixed everything. With the help of Fabian, that I want to thank, <laughs> and uh, so that was my lowest moment that became the highest moment winning the championship, the the Challenger Trophy. John, maybe well, you should explain who Fabian is. Yeah, yeah. Fabian, the, um, <laughs> the the chief technical officer in um, in Euronescar, and basically, when a team has a problem with their car. The first person they go to is Fabian. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's a really busy man. <laughs> yeah, and I want to say that I still don't understand how he can work all that time. <laughs> I, I think he don't sleep. Uh, he's great. He's really great. <laughs> yeah, he's mostly everywhere. Some, sometimes you yeah. really, <laughs> you really see. Wait, you meet Fabian in pit box and you say, wait, but weren't you? That's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's everywhere. He's, he's in every box uh, in the same moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, David, what was your strongest point in 2020 and what you think you missed that you will work on for 2021? So my strongest point, I'm sure to say that was the... Um, uh, that I was patient. I, I didn't want my my philosophy was uh, don't break the car, don't uh, go in an, any accident. So it was to finish races because I saw that uh, th those kind of races are really hard. So a lot of people tend to uh, crash each other and retire. So I I, I thought that uh, uh, finishing every race was the best way to. To, to get points and also for me to get experience because if I start retiring at every race I, I, I can't drive and I can't get experience so that was my, my strongest point I think and my lowest my hardest point the lowest point was that uh, I'm still not fast as uh, the first driver because I need a lot of practice uh, I need to test with the team, uh, we need to understand the car, to understand the setup, to be perfect in every race and every track. So uh, to be careful, to drive carefully was uh, a way to uh, recover from this, uh, this gap. Um, 
the lack of racing experience is not your problem. I know you are also a driving coach. You give away your experience to young drivers. But I have one question. Why did you choose your NASCAR as your next step? Yeah, nice question. I, I choose NASCAR because I think it's the um, most uh, interesting uh, championship at the moment in in Europe, but I can say in the in the world also maybe because you know for for us driver for for the the most of all of us is the budget. So in I think Euro NASCAR is a great great. A way to spend your budget and your sponsor budget with um, in a great championship because now I saw the the championship without uh, people on the track uh, with at closed doors, but I think that there is no championship that uh, grants you this visibility at the same price because. We have to say that in motorsport, the budget is really, really important. It's the most important thing. So that's why I choose Euro NASCAR. And then driving the cars, I also reconsidered my opinion because, you know, I came from Formula cars, so totally different car. But I had a lot of fun, really a lot of fun driving those big, big, big cars. And it's not... A okay, John. Yeah, and you also... I just wanted to ask David about the driver's recruitment program, because he said he, he only drove the car half an hour in the driver's recruitment program, but it was a key to for you to be able to enter the series. What do you think about the program? Yeah, I think that one this that is one of the best things that Ronaskar do, because no other championship may make uh, a program like that, where uh, you driver can have the opportunity to, uh, first of all, Uh, get in contact with uh, with the championship, with the car and everything. And also give you the chance to, to have a, um, a, an advantages, a budget advantage in uh, for the season. And that's something uh, amazing. In my opinion, that was something amazing. So it's one of the best part of Aeronascar for drivers. So we can definitely recommend the March 10, 11 drivers recruitment program uh, for those who are interested in joining the series. Get in touch with info, info at euronescar.com. Absolutely, absolutely. I recommend it. Okay, now my next question. Um, you said something about the cars, but we also had tracks. Um, despite the pandemic, we visited some of the interesting places in Europe, but what was your favorite track in the 2020 season and why? Okay, so my favorite track, I think uh, it was uh, Rijeka because it was already one of my favorite tracks. And I can say again that is, it was my favorite track. I love fast tracks, so Rijeka, Rijeka is amazing. But also, I think every, every, every track was... Uh, it was awesome. Uh, also Zolder. So I loved Zolder. And so, yeah, so Rijeka and Zolder. But if I have to choose Rijeka, Rijeka. Yeah, it was the track that was uh, introduced to Euro NASCAR in 2020 due to the pandemic. We were supposed to go to Autodrome Most in the Czech Republic, but then we were not allowed to go there. So we go, we went to Croatia, to the Automotodrome Grobnik, and it was just amazing nice pictures with all the hills in the background and a very fast track yes so the next thing is um we had five events with the double header at the end of the season but let's put a smile on our fans faces what was the funniest story of the 2020 season inside the track or outside you choose uh the funniest <laughs> yeah i have to a lot of a lot of moments with mauro trione was funny <laughs> But no, yeah, I have to. You to... no, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had a lot of uh, converse, funny conversation after the races uh, in in his box, and uh, uh, yeah, every moment with him was uh, was funny. Uh, I don't know uh, funny uh, funny moments. I in in Croatia maybe we started. It was the only race where we had a bit of public. 
a bit of crowd uh, and so people was coming uh, to the box to see the car and we i started making ch children going uh, sitting in my car and that was a really really funny moment well that was great yeah so, so i can't wait to, to see how it is with full crowd <laughs> yeah speaking of crowds what's the first thing you're going to say to the fans to the first fan you meet when they will be allowed again at the events uh what i'm gonna say cheer for me get uh <laughs> yeah cheer for me cheer for me and maybe i give him a, a bumper i i break a lot of bumpers during the race so I, <laughs> I will give them a, a bumper <laughs> well that's a that's i, I well and you you'll agree with me we, we have seen it plenty of times including yeah. little children going away going away from the track rolling tires up a hill uh, in uh, in francia corta that was super super funny <laughs> yeah i think yeah. there are some fans in europe that have already half of a euro nasca car at home at least, uh, <laughs> at least their spare parts uh, or something like the body parts <laughs> so some some day we will see a replica car made out of old stuff i think <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely oh. I think. There are more, more, uh, more NASCAR pieces in the uh, home of uh, people that in uh, Aero NASCAR uh, headquarters. <laughs> so, and also <laughs> about Francia Corta, I have a flash, mm -hmm. flashback that uh, my I, I saw Aero NASCAR for the first time in Francia Corta in 2017. And I, 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 I fell in love with Aero NASCAR in that moment because there was a lot of people and also a friend of mine took home a tire so we what we are we're talking about <laughs> and be and be ready be ready because fans will come back to you to have their cut parts signed by you yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we had people from germany collecting parts of alon de car from sonoma california and they brought it to to one of our races to have it to have them signed it's Unbelievable. <laughs> NASCAR fans, you're the best. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have one, one, one more question, man. Uh, and it's about the present. Uh, how is the off-season going? And what, what's the plan for 2021, if you already have? So, uh, my off-season is going pretty, pretty well, except the last period I get, uh, I get uh, COVID, but uh, it, it was okay. But the off season was good i'm i'm uh, I, I need to drive so i'm i can't wait to start again to 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 drive to test with my with my team and i can't wait to for valencia in uh, in april obviously hoping for uh, we have to see how the situation uh, with covid-19 evolves but i i can't wait for, for to start and um, for 2021 i'm working with uh, my team uh, for uh, for the sponsor especially as we said the budget is the most important thing and but i'm i'm positive so as i told you i can't i can't wait to start and now i want to recover the gap from the from the from the top drivers so basically there are great chances to have you back on the Euronasca Pro Grid in 2021 with not only motorsport. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I will work uh, at 100% to be there. Okay, I think Gianluca, this is it for today. Thank you so much, Davide, for joining us here for the new episode of Pure Racing Pit Reporters. And of course, follow the Euronasca social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest news. And I can guarantee you there is something coming up during the winter break that you don't want to miss. I cannot tell you something about it right now, but there will be something coming. And with that said, I give you the last words, Gianluca, here for today. Uh, thank you, Andre, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, David, for your time. Thank and, you. of course, we look forward to see you on track in 2021, and we look forward to hopefully have all the fans with us, virtually or in person. In person will be definitely better. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 
Bye. See you in 2021.